Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Tim from Tim's PC and I build custom PCs to suit anyone's needs or budget. I also live stream my builds and repairs for transparency and educational purposes. So if you'd like to get an awesome new PC and you'd like to see it put together live, send me a message today. Alright, so what we're doing tonight is a little bit different. We're going to start doing something new. So basically every week I read a whole heap of stuff about the the PC world and the, the PC industry um, new parts and new bits and pieces and stuff and there are a number of sort of web sources that, that cover all this sort of stuff so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sharing my um, my weekly like um, my weekly review of the, the news so what we're gonna what we're gonna do is basically probably do it every Sunday night, or I don't know. I haven't got a I haven't got a solid um, I haven't got a solid night down for when we want to do this. But once a week we'll do the we'll do do this sort of review of the sort of the the callouts from from the week, the exciting news, um, the the good things, the the stupid things. If we see something stupid, we can rip shit on it. Um, yeah, all all a bit of fun, but um, trying to be as informative as possible. Um, like I said, I spend a bit of time every week, sort of just reading and watching things like this, so it kind of makes sense to. Um, to actually sort of share that um, and broadcast that to everyone on the channel. So what we're going to be doing is that's going to be that's going to be a Patreon thing. So we'll up we'll upload like a like a sort of a weekly episode, like a just a a non-live, just a standard video upload onto YouTube, um, maybe even Facebook as well. Um, but the the main event is going to be able to go through the news with me and be in the live chat you can answer you can sorry you can ask questions and i'll answer them for you live um because we'll be looking and and reading things if i if i don't know we can we can go and um we can go and look that up together and we can learn some stuff together so look it should be it should be pretty good um we've got one person saying hi it's all it's all very very slow here at the start um my my lovely wife has has left the room it looks like brendan and it looks like latios hey latios how you going good to have you with us christine's just left the room there so yeah like i said if if you if you just joined you're watching we're going to be doing something a little bit different here weekly um I do have a Patreon now, so once a week on Patreon, we're going to go through all of the latest PC-related news from the top news sources and be answering your questions live and stuff. So, look, like I said, I've got a Patreon, so if you want to support me on Patreon, like, you can do it, do it from as little as 10 cents a day. Like... Most people, most of you, can afford ten cents a day at, at a minimum. So, come on over to Patreon. There's a link in the description. Come on over to Patreon. Sign up for for the at least the ten cent a day option. <laughs> and um, yeah, we'll be able to we'll be able to do this weekly. So, like I said, it'll be pretty fun. We'll we'll look through all of the um, all of the latest news and stuff from from all of the main news sources there. So let's Latios say I can't I can't read it from here. Just it's fire. Brendan's <laughs> <laughs> evening. I sell that, yep. Latios says, hey everyone, how many fans do you want the entire show, please? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, so right beside me is the the PC from the other day here. So this is the um, the one that we're having all the dramas with the cooler. So if you didn't catch the solution there, I needed to do a I had to do a manual 
um, firmware update on the on the block, which was yeah, it was a bit of a pain, but we got there in the end, and it's all it's all working properly. So happy days, and I mean, it looks it looks pretty good. Um, if we change over to the um, the screen there. We can have a look at some of the things we can do with the the lighting there. Hey, Fiona. How you going? Good to have you with us. And so, yeah, we're just having a look at the the PC from the other night. We obviously we solved the um, the issue there with the with the block. We can see the the screen there in our L Connect app. So that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, just repeating myself again, um, what, the, what we're going to be doing now is once a week, live for Patreon, we're going to be doing like a weekly review of the, the news in the PC world. So we're going to go through sort of the main news sources, we're going to have a look at some stuff. You're going to be able to ask questions and all that if you've got something for me. Um, we can go and look that up together and, and have a look at things. So Patreon's designed to, um, you know, get you to be able to interact with me more directly. Um, if, if that's something that interests you, um, it, depending on the tier that you sign up for, um, you might even like, I have, um, I provide technical support to people who, who pay, the, the higher tiers so you could build your own PC and you're having problems with something you can actually um, you could actually arrange some help either by email or if you pay for the the maximum tier um, I could even give you a phone call to, to try and sort it out so look that's what so that's what we're doing that's what's a little bit different here about tonight but what we're gonna do we're gonna have a quick play around here with the um the fans and stuff from last night because we had so much dramas so many dramas i should say okay so i should be able to yeah Hey man, how you going? Good to have you with us as always. And Fiona wants to know, Fiona wants to know is the L Connect 3 better than the old, older 2 version? Yeah, yeah, well I mean you need it for, you need it for modern fans anyway, so... Okay, how's that looking? That looks pretty cool. We do with our screen here. Um, it's on like a black hole at the moment. We got like the this kind of thing. Fireworks, what's that? Oh, it's a bit boring, isn't it? Snow. Eh. Meteor shower. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Mandala. Hey, that looks. That's pretty. That's pretty trippy, right? That reminds me of. Remember Windows Media Player visuals? Yes. Remember watch yes. staring at them when you were a kid? Yes. It kind of reminds me of that. Ooh. Blossom. Oh. Okay. Interesting. Transform. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, Can obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's. Why don't we? Why don't we do that? Why don't we find a gif? Um. What? Nine what? Cat. Nine cat. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's. Is that how I spell it? Alrighty! Yeah! There we go! Now let's make it bigger so you can so you can have a look. <laughs> so there he is. Nine cat. Yeah. Look at that. Okay, cool. All right, so we've done we've done that. We had a quick play around with that. Okay, how are we going in the comments there? Oh, yep, all good, up to date, sweet as. Um, well, look, let's start. Let's start having a look at some news. So, look, let's go. PC news. Now, there's a few. There's a few main kind of sources here so you got um, you got Tom's hardware it's PC mag PC world PC gamer tech spot that there, there's there is a lot there is a lot of stuff there potentially to cover but what we'll do is we're just gonna have we're gonna have a browse through because this is this is literally live I'm not sort of reviewing at all and putting together like a summary we're gonna have a look through the major the major news um, major news pages and we're going to see what we can we can find alrighty not really relevant to us US lawmakers annoyed with um, Huawei's latest laptop with <laughs> Intel me media like CPUs Tim. What's up? A <laughs> uh, vendor vendor ready's AMD motherboards for for Zen five CPUs. Let's have a look at that. Ryzen nine thousand is likely right around the corner. Yeah, okay, no worries. So some of you might have seen that that they've dropped some Ryzen eight thousand chips. The main ones I've seen is the 8600G and the 8700G. So they're the ones like like the 5600G. They've got the inbuilt APU. Um, I'm assuming it's an upgrade from the Radeon 7 um, graphics that are with the 5600G. Anyway. All right. Re reports that MSI has officially released new UEFI firmware updates for its AM5 motherboards featuring next-gen CPU support. All oh, juicy. Uh, these updates reportedly support AMD's upcoming Ryzen 9000 CPUs, which will come with the Zen 5 CPU architecture. Um, Asus will... Um, Asus was the first motherboard manufacturer to adopt AGESA 1.1.7.0 with MSI being the latest board maker to utilize the new firmware update. Um, so AGESA reportedly supports AMD Granite Ridge CPUs and Fire Range believed to be AMD's next generation Ryzen APUs based on Zen 5. Cool. Um, so look, for me personally, I'm I'm excited about next generation uh, Ryzen APUs. That's the, the chips with the um, the built-in graphics. Because I wanna I, I would like to get to the point where you know we can start offering 
people a lot better value for money with, with PCs and also much more power efficient PCs. So all this stuff is going to become more important as we move forward. Um, cause I mean, the, the level of performance that you can get from like a Ryzen 5600G is pretty impressive. So no graphics card needed. Um, anyway, look, we'll keep reading on. Zen 5 is AMD's next generation CPU architecture that will succeed Zen 4. Little is known about this new architecture, but we've seen leaks. Zen 5 will, uh, uh, allegedly offers a 15% increase in IPC improvement over Zen 4. The most significant improvements will come from the core and cache designs, which will be more advanced and boast even larger cache capacities than what Zen 4 is capable of today. Inevitably, AMD will also use a much newer TSMC process node, improving efficiency and potentially boosting clock speeds beyond Ryzen 7000. So, look, that'll be interesting if you're a bit of a, an overclocker there. Um, Granite Ridge is the code name for AMD's purported Ryzen 9000 series lineup, which will consist entirely of CPUs using a, chip, a chiplet style design philosophy. So that's where they put like multiple sort of CPUs together and they like use them together to achieve um, better performance. That's basically what, what it is. Um, Fire Range is the code name for AMD's Ryzen 10,000, or however they brand it, APUs, which will come with high-performance RDNA-based graphics. Hey, this is what I was talking about before. I'm going to get RDNA on the CPU, which will just, you know, boost that performance massively. These chips will be the successor of AMD's recently released Ryzen 8000G. That's what I was talking about before. Uh, the desktop APUs and are expected to use a monolithic die, just like all of AMD's current and previous APU designs. So monolithic die is just like got the one sort of processor, quote unquote. Um, Zen 5 is expected to arrive sometime this fall, so this, this spring here in um, Australia and the Southern Hemisphere, which explains why AMD and its board partners are already pushing Zen 5 enabled BIOS updates. So Asus and MSI are the only board makers that have um, already updated, but expect Gigabyte, ASRock and the rest of AMD's board partners to follow suit shortly. So that was pretty juicy right there. Um, happy days. Looks like the, the future is bright for for um, for AMD and especially on the on the APU side of things. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let's read on here. Hard drive destroyer vibrates hard drives to death in 90 seconds. <laughs> oh jeez. Um, might want to look that one up. It's probably a video of it. Look that one up on your own. That might be a bit of fun. Um, this briefcase lets you walk around with 368 terabytes of NVMe SSDs. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, okay, um, in all seriousness... Uh, U.S. backlist Intel and Nvidia's key partner in China. Ooh, ooh, that'll get that'll get spicy. The U.S. government's given Intel some serious money and tax breaks and and stuff like that. Um, and AMD apparently. Anyway, it's a story for another day. Western Digital preps four terabyte SD cards. Hell yeah. You babe, you're a photographer. Four terabyte SD cards. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Let's have a quick look at that. That'll be important for a lot of people. Um, Western Digital showcased three major new SD cards. A four terabyte SDUC SD card. 
a 2 terabyte STX CST card, and even a 256 gigabyte ST Express supported card. Below we'll examine some of the finer details including why SDUC cards are still rare and how SD Express compares. Um, look, I, I think we're going to read, this is a little bit longer than I thought, I just wanted to get the details sort of about the launch, this is about the, um, the in-depth um, details about SD cards, so that won't concern everyone, but if you're, if you're into photography and you use SD cards, definitely have a look at that, because this will be some game-changing tech, having 4 terabytes on such a tiny little thing like an SD card, that, that sort of opens up some possibilities. Anyway, what else have we got? Raspberry Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi 4 brings KITT from Knight Rider to life using chat GPT. It's really interesting. I, I honestly, personally, I don't know much about Raspberry Pi. I haven't, I haven't, like, I've never bought one to play around with. I really should. Um, like, obviously, it's right up, it's right up my alley. I've got friends that are quite into it, but I personally haven't played around too much with it. How are we going? What's up? Ah, Jared. Hey, how you going, man? Yeah, this is your PC. Um, we up updated, sorry, uploaded, I should say, a 9-cat GIF to the CPU cooler. Because obviously you can upload GIFs, so you can have like a, a moving picture there on the cooler. Yeah. And yeah, all of your fans are in separate groups. So these three here are in their own group. These three there are in their own group, this three here are in their own group, this this one here is in its own group. The fans themselves are also individually addressable. So you can do you can spend hours customizing your lighting there. Um, what else we got? Jim Keller suggests NVIDIA should have used Ethernet to stitch together Blackwell GPUs. Um, maybe. All right. <laughs> ah yes. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the next next one down here. Let's have a look at PC Gamer gaming news. Okay. So editors pick Ubisoft is stripping people's licenses for the crew weeks after its shutdown, nearly squandering hopes. Of, of fan servers and acting as a stark reminder of how volatile digital ownership is. Yeah, um, definitely, definitely something that probably not so much on younger people's minds, but probably something at the, in the back of people's minds who are um, at least my age and older. So the downside of digital ownership has reared its ugly head for enjoyers of Ubisoft's open world multiplayer race, The Crew. The publisher has revoked its license for those who owned it on Ubisoft Connect, almost destroying fans' ambitions to revive the game in both an offline and online format. The crew was pulled from sale back in December, with Ubisoft revealing that the servers would be shut down at the beginning of April. Frustratingly, despite a large portion of the game being doable in single player, the crew remained an online only endeavour throughout its decade long lifespan. That had that already rendered the game unplayable. But it seems Ubisoft is determined to take things one step further to stamp out any attempts to continue playing it past its expiry date. So you gotta love it when, you know, these companies are so, like, anti-consumer. Like, yeah, anti-gamer, but really what they're doing more broadly is sort of anti-consumer type practices. Um... Fans began to notice earlier in the week that the license of the game had been snatched away from them. A message at the top of the game's library page reads, You no longer have access to this game. 
imagine that you know you've bought you've bought the game you think that it's like yours now and now the the publisher or whoever is telling you that no no you don't have it anymore we're, we're taking it back now why not check the store to pursue your adventures oh my god that's that's a little bit jesus that's a little bit you know patronizing is that the right word for it <laughs> i think i think that's the right word for it like you know you no longer have this game it's like you know like fuck you um, we're taking your game back and, 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 and then it's like, and, and it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's like, and it's like, after that, like, you don't have access to the game. Fuck you. We don't care. Why not check out the store to continue your, continue to pursue your adventures, to continue to give us a little bit more cash. Give us your fucking cash now, okay? <laughs> Give us your fucking cash now. You know, there's a there's a movie about that. You know, there's a guy called Chopper, Chopper Reed, and he's talking to a guy named Neville Bartos, and Neville Bartos is just a just a gangster. Like he's don't worry, don't feel bad for Neville Bartos. <laughs> but Chopper Neville needed Chopper needed Bartos. some Jeff Chopper needed some cash. And, and, he, and he's got a gun, and he's at Neville's house, and he gives Neville, like, ten seconds to, to get some fucking cash. And, ne and Neville decides to try and bargain with him, so after ten seconds, Neville gets shot. <laughs> so, poor, poor Nev, but he got, some, he got some fucking cash at the end of that. Anyway, anyway, so it's also been moved to its own individual section in Player's Library under Inactive Games, just to sort of taunt you a little bit more. Apparently booting the game directly from the installation directory will still launch the game, but only in a demo mode. If you need any more convincing that I'm not really being too hyperbolic here, there you have it. <laughs> there you have it. What's up? Hey Mad Warrior, how you going? Good to have you with us. So hopefully people are enjoying this new new bit of content here tonight. So this is going to be a weekly thing where we go through the news. Um, it's uh, it's only a one hour long stream, so it doesn't go forever. So be sure to jump in and and be a part of the live chat while we're live. Um, also. Shameless plug here, please head on over to Patreon, the link is in the description, and sign up, because you can sign up for as little as 10 cents a day. Now, look, I got like 9,000 subscribers on, on YouTube, if 9,000 people just committed 10 cents a day, you know, I might be able to be sitting in front of a camera here, full time making content, you know, that would be really, really cool. Um, but yeah, I'm not expecting anything like that. I would just, I would just appreciate if you like seeing the content that I do here and you'd like to see me sort of continue to do this into the future, head on over and sign up for, yeah, 10 cents a day, $3 a month as at a minimum, or if you can afford to commit a little bit more and get a little bit more for that commitment. Okay. So look. That, that pretty much sums up everything we need to know about this article, right? This is, this is what's wrong with digital ownership. It's, it's just sad that the company seems to be so passive aggressive towards their, um, their customers there. I don't know. Like, like I have a feeling that, you know, these this phrasing here is just done by someone young who you know young people i'm not i'm not paying out on people for being young i was young for ages i was also like young and relatively ignorant about lots of things so either it's someone young who doesn't really understand what this sort of phrasing sort of sounds like because that that comes off pretty passive aggressive um and patronizing if you um 
you know, if you bought a game from a company and then they decided to take away your digital um, license to the game. And then also have it moved to its own individual section in the player's library under inactive games. And then apparently if you boot the game, it launches it in a demo mode just to troll you more. That, like, seriously, man. That I can't be the only one who thinks that's just a bit ridiculous. Um, what else have we got here? Rise of the Tyrad. The Triad. Ludicrous Edition update adds cross-platform multiplayer. Another cut character and more. God, what a joke. Regular riddle. Today's wordle answer. Oh, God, do we need to do that? No. What's up? Yeah, yeah, I thought so. And, like, you know, if anyone's got questions, anyone um, has heard some news or something like that, let me know and we can look it up and have a look. Oh God! Can you imagine that? Like, um, I play, I play, I play Pokemon Go, and you know, I I put I put a little bit of money into it, not 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 a great deal of money considering sort of what I do, but I I it it gets me out of the house sometimes. Like, I know that for a lot of people who have um have anxiety and stuff like that. I, I suffer from anxiety and all that, so I I know that crushing feeling that you get. Um, something like Pokemon Go helps motivate me to sort of get out on those days that I don't really want to get out. So sometimes I put a little bit of money into that. I'll tell you, I'd be really, really, really pissed if someone took away my Pokemon Go account. I've put a lot of money and a lot of hours into that game and, and what I've what I've got. Um, I'd be really, really, really pissed. Now, as for that last story with the person who's, um, you know, it's a game that's been out for like 10 years. Imagine putting 10 years into a game that you're passionate about and have that happen. <sighs> All right, so keep, keep reading here on... PC gamer, we'll check out we'll check out one of the other pages soon. What have we got here from the editor's pick? Content warning is giving you a chance to actually go viral by sending your best clips to the Lost Footage Project. Okay, that's that seems a little bit strange. Japanese cops bust in bust interior decorator that moonlighted selling hacked Pokemon. I did it to make a living. Oh, God. So, before I read anything, selling hacked Pokemon. So, I'm assuming this is, this is like, um, with, what do you call it? Not a, um, <laughs> I can't think of what you call it. The, the little cheat device for, for, um. Little, little cheat device that you plug in. You got the little thing for the three DS games, and you can like use software to generate whatever Pokemon you want. Like sh you can make shiny perfects and stuff like that, and trade them out. If you ever seen like all these like random Pokemon on the on the um the tr the trading that are like shiny and level one hundred and perfect, they they come from this, and. You know, realistically, they're as real as any other Pokemon once you, once you get them on your game. So, happy days if you get one. But people normally just... They normally buy it so they can they can have it for their own personal use. But then they normally just, you know, one to trade extra ones. So, what's this guy done? Is he actually fucking put together a website where you can buy these? Okay, let's have a read. A 36-year-old man from Kyoto Prefecture has been arrested by Japanese police for creating and selling rare varieties of Pokemon online. Yoshiro Yamakawa, sorry if I'm butchering that, 
An interior decorator by trade. An interior decorator. <laughs> Is that even a thing here? Like, who's... Man, that might just be something that the, you know, the other... The other 50% of the, the population uses. Um, use an unspecified modification device. So... Yeah, that's what we're talking about. To alter the stats and characteristics of Pokemon in the popular Nintendo Switch title Pokemon Violet before offer offering them to trade in the alleged vi violation of Japan's Unfair Competition Act. Okay, yeah, so there's, a, there's an app called Pokemon Home and you can transfer Pokemon from the 3DS to Pokemon Home and then onto Nintendo Switch versions of Pokemon. So what you can do with the cheap device that I, I'm having a mental blank here on, on what it is. Um, so you can use that with your 3DS game to generate um, to generate Pokemon. Basically, it's this little USB device. You take the 3DS game out, you plug the 3DS game into your computer with that device, you download some software, and then you just go in... Action Replay? Action Replay! Yes, that's it. So you can get Action Replay, you can get one for, um... You can get one for, uh, 3DS, like original. You can get one for 3DS, the, the, the new one. Um, you can get them for the real, the, the old one, like the Game Boy Advance, is it? The, the early one? And most Pokemon, most of the games have a way where you can move a Pokemon to the next generation. So you can sort of, you can usually trade a Pokemon up through the generations as long as you've got all of the legitimate games. Um... So, it's easy to bring Pokemon that are hacked into the Nintendo Switch world. Where he's violating Japan's Unfair Competition Act, that comes down to the fact that he's selling them. If he was just bringing them in and just wonder trading them out and handing them out for free, no one could really give a shit, okay? If, like, if they really cared, they would, like, ban... They would ban certain Pokemon with certain stats. They would just make it impossible for you to have a, a shiny level 100, whatever. But they know that that doesn't work. Then people will just start hacking, you know, one stat below the, the blocked stat. So, yeah. But they will definitely, especially Nintendo and Pokemon, they're definitely going to come after you. If you try and, like, make money on the back of their, like, intellectual property. Um, so continuing on, Yamakawa was selling the Pokemon on a third-party site dedicated to selling in-game items per Japanese outlet NHK. Posted adverts with text such as, Now only order six monsters for only 4,000 yen. Works out to be under thirty dollars through the period of December twenty twenty two and March twenty twenty three. Other hacked Pokemon were sold for up to thirteen thousand yen, and Yak Yamakawa also offered custom orders. The police say that, that the total sales of the falsified data, aka the black market Pokemon, run into the millions of yen. Okay, so I mean this guy. This is this is like an actual commercial operation. They're they're gonna they're definitely gonna come down on you. Police arrested him April nine during an interview. He confessed to the charges, saying, "I did it to earn a living." I feel a little bit bad for him, right? Um, the investigation into his activities continues, though through uh, sorry though reading between the lines, authorities seem most concerned about the software Yamakawa was using, which apparently remains freely available and so yeah it'll just be something it'll, it'll just be something like the um, the action replay app that you use the 3DS um, so continuing on on April 9 2024 Koshi Prefectural Police arrested a man who was working on the Nintendo Switch to modify same save game, save data of game software. <laughs> he was 
I'm not a professional public speaker. Obviously. He was he was arrested on suspicion of violating the Unfair Competition Prevention Act for providing services that circumvented the technical restrictions on the platform. On a site dedicated to buying and selling game accounts, items, the man explained in the listings, all type of Pokemon can be created and then can be modified and to save data on behalf of the purchaser and modifier that Nintendo Switch on behalf that didn't sound right I read that wrong and and then modified the save data on behalf of the purchaser and modified the Nintendo Switch on behalf of the purchaser yeah so this is this is definitely this this here this is the nitty gritty and this is where it becomes a lot more illegal than um, doing what I was talking about um, ACCS is an industry group dedicated to copyright protection, so unsurprisingly, Ed has had plenty more to say about how such practices impairs the enjoyment of games, ups upsets of balance, and of course, items that require payment can be obtained without paying. The organization ends this broadside with an extremely optimistic call for purchases of such data to please be aware it has been created by illegal means and to stop using it I don't think many people are going to do that um, you'll take my juiced up beedo from my cold dead hands <laughs> on a serious note Japan's laws regarding stuff like this is somewhat more draconian than those in the west modifying save files and the distribution of them has been illegal in the country since 2019 unfair competition prevention act they don't mess around with the penalties either. Yamakawa faces up to five years in jail, a potential five million dollar yen in fines, or some combination of the two. That seems absolutely wild for flogging some hacked Pokemon, but we'll have to wait and see how the court interprets those sentencing guidelines in this particular case. So that's pretty insane right there, but yeah, you know, you get that. Alrighty, so what's going on? What's going on with PC World? Okay, it's official. Ads are coming to the Windows Start menu. Oh god. Shouldn't that just happen if you don't have a product key? Uh, yeah, so we knew about SanDisk's 4TB SS, sorry, SD card. Uh, what's going on with the chiplet market? We spoke a little bit about chiplets there. There's a, there's a delittered one to have a look. you got like a few different little chips there that are, that are doing different things as opposed to one sort of monolithic die. Um... I'm not really seeing too much very exciting extra stuff to look at here. Mm. What's up? Oh, we need to set up a shop in the Patreon. And people can buy merch. Mm. Would you like Tim's PC merch? <laughs> Tim's face on a mug? Oh, God. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. There wasn't much there at previous one. I'd buy one. <laughs> okay, NVIDIA RTX 4070 Super versus the Radeon 7900 GRE. That's the new one there, the GRE. It sits... Oh, it sits just below. This. Why is it doing this? Shouldn't be doing that. Um, just hang on a second, people. I don't know what happened there. It wasn't, it wasn't the HDCP on the capture card. I think I just knocked the HDMI cable then. Oh. Bloody HDMI. Hang on. 
there is a meme there is a meme that I've seen recently that that rips shit on the VGA connector. And it had like all these other connections and it said like thanks for making our not you with the VGA lives easier blah 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 and it had a fucking HDMI port it had like a USB A port Mic died. I'm sorry about that. Really sorry about that. That's why Christine's got to got to be onto it. Cause I don't cause I don't know while I'm sitting here. Um, yeah. So definitely check out this article here. Look it up for yourself because we're not going to go through it. It's it's very 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 long. But what it has is, it has direct comparisons by game and by resolution comparisons between the Radeon 7900GRE and the RTX 4070 Super. And so that'll be a really interesting comparison for anyone who's in the market for, for either of them because they're both around the same price. Yeah. Says hello. Hey Kershu, how you going? Good to have you with us. Jazz says great show too. Oh, glad you like it. So yeah, I think we'll do this. Yeah, we'll definitely be doing this once a week. We'll just check out all the all the latest news. If you've got any questions for me, feel free to ask. Um, definitely jump over to the um, the Patreon because that's where we're going to be we're going to be doing most of this this format. Um, don't worry, it's not like a rip-off or anything. It only costs 10 cents a day to, to, to sign up to Patreon. And then you'll get this sort of live format. Um, because, if, because if it's just going on YouTube and Facebook, it'll probably be cut down versions of what we, what we see here. Not the live version. Yeah. Do I play Fortnite? Do I play Fortnite? Seth I doesn't, but I do occasionally. Christine plays Fortnite. I don't play Fortnite. Not because I, not because I hate Fortnite or anything like that. I just don't have time. I I do this, and I'm also a sales manager for a, a multinational company as well. So I'm pretty busy, though. I don't I don't I don't have to do a lot of I don't have to do a lot of work with my other job. Okay, it's it's pretty 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 crazy. Oh no. Is it doing that again? It occasionally does that. So I don't know why. I think we need a whole new a whole new streaming setup. Mm -hmm. I think that's definitely gonna happen. Alright, so yeah, definitely definitely have a look at this one. Um do you wanna do you wanna look that up, babe? What? Oh. Just type in just type in PC news and just go to TechSpot and just share that share a link to this because it's a it's something worth worth looking at. Share it to um, the Facebook page as well. Nvidia uh, advises crash prone gamers to look for, to Intel for assistance. 
Burning hot. <laughs> oh, okay. So, I mean, that's, that is definitely something that Intel um, definitely markets on, is, is their stability. The top one, top left. That one there. Okay, so users of Intel's high-end 13th and 14th gen CPUs have been complaining about instability issues in gaming for months. Now Chipzilla, oh, this person's definitely not, definitely not biased at all, um, will address negative feedback from GeForce GPU owners as well. So, NVIDIA's latest graphics drivers for GeForce GPUs include some interesting release notes which the company is sharing on its official forums as well. The GeForce Game Ready Drivers version 55.2.12 provide a notable please note section at the end addressing two of the specific issues related to Chromium based applications such as web browsers and Discord and the challenges gamers have faced with Intel's Raptor Lake and Raptor Lake refresh CPUs. If a system built around an Intel 13th Gen, 14th Gen unlocked desktop CPUs experience stability issues, out of video memory errors or crashes during shader compilation, the release notes advise users to seek troubleshooting existence on Intel and Epic on the Intel and Epic Games website. The first site referenced by NVIDIA links the, to the Intel processor support forums where an employee acknowledges the company's awareness of instability issues with certain workloads. Intel has stated it is actively collaborating with its partners in analyzing these issues to provide an effective solution as noted in a statement made in February. Although users continue to report crashes to this day, the second link provided by NVIDIA directs users to the RAD Game Tools website where Epic Games explains the nature of the issue. The root cause of the instability primarily experienced on the Intel 13900K and 14900K processors, according to RAD, is a hardware issue that can lead to OODL data decompression failures or crashes in games built with the Unreal Engine. A small fraction of the mentioned CPUs may exhibit this unpredictable behavior under heavy computing loads, which seems to be triggered by a combination of BIOS settings, high CPU clock rates, and power usage. Okay, so that right there, right there, this is this is definitely, in my opinion, this is definitely something to it. Remember when I always set up a 13 or 14900K, I always save in that custom power profile, and I always talk about how much power they push through these CPUs. This is what I'm talking about. So what I wonder is whether end users with um, with these CPUs who are experiencing this issue, I'm wondering whether cutting back the um, cutting back the wattage on the via the XTU app would resolve some of these issues. I mean, it may or may not. It could be a more it could be a more technical issue than that. Um, but that would be one thing interesting to try. So if you're if you're in this situation that this article describes, definitely check that out. Um, RAD's website offers successful workarounds to mitigate instability or crashes, including limiting the peak performance of Intel CPUs using software like Intel XTU and adjusting the, Uf the BIOS UEFI firmware settings. That's exactly what I was just talking about there. Um, it's hoped that Intel will release a definitive fix likely through a microcode update for its high performance gaming processors in the near future. Aside from the instability issues, Nvidia's latest GeForce drivers provide specific optimizations for Season 3 of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, 
Call of Duty Warzone and Diablo 4 with, with its ray tracing upgrade. The driver release addresses a bug in the resizable bar profile for Horizon Forbidden West. However, some issues affecting older GPU hardware, GeForce GTX 10 and RTX 20 series, um, Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition, Tekken 8, and VR gaming will unfortunately require future fixes. What's up? Ambient computing for the... Introducing AI in the first multi... Module device that is wearable and easy to use for even making calls, sending messages, seeking answers, capturing moments, taking notes and managing the digital world. AI can act as your assistant, second brain. That's pretty... That's pretty interesting. Um... I... I haven't... I haven't heard of AI pin. Um... It looks pretty cool. Yeah, we've got it. We've got it up on the on the streaming PC, so we'll have a look at that. Definitely. How long we How long we've we been going for? Um, oh. Um, it was close to an hour. I think we're getting there. We'll have a look at We'll have a look at one last. Um, we'll have a look at one last article. Okay, she said maybe Tim should have a phone or something so you can see the chats as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it could it could be done with a bigger screen on the on the wall there. Be nice if I could somehow have the have the chat overlaid on my on my screen. I'm sure there's probably some way of doing it. I'm just not. Yeah, it's just not hitting me at the moment. Um, let's see what IGN's up to. Anything super exciting there. Square Enix hoping to release Final Fantasy VII Remake Trilogy by, um, Finale by 2027. That'll be cool. Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's that's good. That's very... 30, 2027 will be 30 years since the original. Yeah, 1997. I think that was the first Final Fantasy game I played on, on PlayStation. Anyway, um, Avalanche Studio Group's pledged to sign a collective bargaining agreement with unionized workers. Um, One Dragon's Dogma 2 player thinks they've found a wild endgame secret. I have honestly, I haven't even heard of that game. Um, Neil Newborn isn't done with. Asterary, ah, as, as, Asterion, despite Larion moving from uh, from Baldur's Gate three. Oh man, I butchered that. Asterion, despite Larion moving from Baldur's Gate three. I was hoping for some, you know, some Call of Duty or Fortnite news or something like that. Yeah. Fall Guy. Who remembers that Fall Guys game that was like super popular for like two that weeks? For ages and then I just stopped playing it, but I had personal reasons to stop playing it. <laughs> Chilling on the last time I played it, and then I couldn't play it anymore because it reminded me of you. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't play this anymore. It reminds me of the cat. Okay, I think that's pretty much going to be going to be done for for the night. Um, what else have we got here? Intel Core Ultra Seven marks a fresh start. Mobile. No one's a really big fan of, of mobile here at Tim's PC. 
certainly not for, for gaming. Intel introduces Guardi 3 AI Accelerator, going bigger and aiming higher in AI, so this will be for like the Xeon platform basically. Here we go, GDR7. Introspect intros GDDR7. Sorry, I misspoke before I said DDR7. I meant GDDR7. Test system for fast GDDR7 GPU design bring up. Introspect this week introduced its M5512 GDDR7 memory test system which is designed for testing GDDR7 memory controllers, physical interface, and GDDR7 SGRAM chips. The tool will enable memory and processor manufacturers to verify that their products perform as specified by the standard. So, look, it's, it's coming. It's coming soon. So, we had GDDR6, and then we had GDDR6+. Um which I thought kind of was GDDR7, but anyway, here's actual GDDR7 now. So one of the crucial phases of processor design bring up is the testing standard interfaces, such as the PCIe DisplayPort or GDDR, is to ensure that they behave as specified, both logically and electronically, and achieve designated performance. So basically, this is this is what all of the um, all of the board partners that that would um, basically buy Nvidia or um, Radeon GPUs and put them on their own boards. They they will be wanting to test their new VRAM chips for it. Um, so this is a very important part of the. Um, the evolution of technology is just this testing phase. So the fact that the fact that this exists now means that you know it's it's coming. It's coming. GDDR7 is coming. It might not be on the RTX 50 series, but um, it's definitely in the works now. Um, the product will be quite useful for des for designers of GPUs, obviously, graphics cards, PCs, notebook equipment, memory chips, which will speed up development of actual products that rely on GDDR7 memory. Uh, for now, GPU and SOC designers, um, as well as memory makers, will use, uh, use highly custom setups consisting of many tools to characterize sign signal integrity as well as con as well as conduct detailed memory read write functions and stress testing which are important things at this phase of development but usage of a single tool greatly speeds up the processes and gives a more comprehensive picture to the specialists so yeah like i said this is a very very important um step in the um in the design and implementation of a new generation of VRAM. So that's pretty cool. All right. Well, look, I think that's going to be it for tonight. We're only going to be, we're going to be doing this for about an hour. Um, and then we'll either, we'll either go to some sort of other content, um, or we'll just leave it there for the night. So Hey Darren, how you going? Good to have you with us. Unfortunately, we're going now. Unfortunately, yeah, we're just about we're just about to wrap up. So, if you if you're just here um, and you haven't heard this yet, basically, um, we've got a Patreon, and we're going to be doing some different content for Patreon. Um, and what we're going to be doing is a weekly uh, live chat, answering your questions, and then I. I sit here and I go through the latest PC tech news from all of the um, all of the major websites and also anything um, other people bring to me or suggest to me. So it's it's definitely it's definitely something new that we haven't done here before. It's something that I I, I spend a certain amount of time looking at all this shit every week. So I may as well share it with, with everybody else. Um, 
But yeah, definitely. Like head over to Patreon. I know it's. I know I keep. I know I keep saying it, but I've got to do it because if not, no one, no one will um, come over to Patreon. I'll be very, very lonely when I do these um, these readouts. You can do it from as little as ten cents a day. That's ten Australian cents. So it's even less if you're in the USA or UK, um, in US cents or UK pence. Um, Jesus, it'd be like five pence a day for Darren. <laughs> but yes, the the Patreon links in the description. Come on over, and um, yeah, we'll do this. We'll do this once a week. Um, yeah, I thought it. I thought it went pretty good. Um, and yeah, like like I said. We can go through the latest news. I can I can give you my thoughts on it. Um, you can ask any questions. If there's an article you've seen and you want me to um, you want me to to look at and to to read through, just send it to me in the live chat and we'll we'll get it up and we'll have a look. So yeah, happy days. So look, um, thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and the Patreon. And I'll catch you all in the next video.